Uh, hello, participants. Uh, welcome uh, to the next part uh, of the lecture. It is related to optimizing LPP. Uh, as we uh, remember earlier, we have uh, discussed what do we mean by LPP. We discussed various aspects of the LPP. Then uh, I started with a method that is known as a graphical method. So uh, we are starting uh, with a solution uh, that gives us a solution uh, to an LPP. Uh, as we have discussed, we have uh, a number of procedures, but the most elementary being graphical method. Um, uh, as it has been mentioned that graphical method is applicable only for two dimensional case or the two variable case. So obviously most of the problems uh, do not fall under it but it gives us a, a good insight about what we are going to do. So first we, uh, we will discuss the graphical method and from that, in, uh, from the insights uh, obtaining from that method, we will move to a higher order method that is known as simplex method. So, right. so uh, we are discussing the graphical method. So uh, yes, uh, so earlier we have taken a case uh, I will repeat that case. So we will uh, discuss the concept first, then we move to the case again, right? As it has been mentioned, it, it has been mentioned in this slide, in the graphical method, we draw a graph. And from that graph, we try to obtain feasible region. As it has been mentioned, feasible region is that where all constraints are satisfied. Because constraints are paramount in nature, they have to be fulfilled. Constraints are paramount, they have to be fulfilled. So we start with uh, considering all the constraints. And accordingly, we have the region that is known as feasible region. So here we have a, a feasible region. And from that feasible region, we move to uh, optimum solution. So, uh, it has, so it has been mentioned that uh, the optimum solutions actually belongs to a subset of feasible region only. So that feasible region, which is most favorable uh, in terms of objective function is taken as the optimum solution. And here, one thing is important. We discuss corner point feasible solution as I, we have discussed the earlier case also. So in this case, uh, uh, we have taken a simple problem just to uh, identify the problem and to uh, give, uh, give you a basic idea. Uh, it is a two dimensional problem having two variables x1 and x2, they are the decision variable. We have to maximize a linear function that was three x1 plus four x2 subject to these two constraints and non-negativity is there. So uh, first of all, we draw these two functions or these two lines uh, on a two dimensional graph. So here green is the first uh, line, right? And um, blue is the second line. Since uh, the equation is less than or equals to, so uh, initially we draw a line considering the strict uh, equality. Then we consider the region that satisfy less than or equals to region or greater than or equals to region. So accordingly, this portion, let me highlight this portion again. So this portion uh, is our, uh, is such a region, region which satisfies both the constraint as well as non-negativity also. So this solution, so it will contain, uh, means it is satisfy all the constraint. So this solution, uh, this space is known as feasible solution space. This is the feasible solution space, means it has satisfy all the constraint. So as in the notes, it has been mentioned that this is the region of our interest because it satisfies all the constraint. And our solution lies in this feasible region only. So obviously there are infinite points, but primarily we are concentrating upon the corner points as it has been mentioned earlier also. So we have following corner points, one is O, other is A, 
having coordinates 20, 0. Other is B having coordinates 2.5, 35. And the third one is C having coordinates 0 to 36. So these are the corner point feasible solutions. They are the corner point feasible solution. So from this corner point <coughs> feasible solution, we will try to figure out where, which point uh, in the feasible region or in uh, particularly which uh, corner point feasible solution is giving us the optimum solution. Uh, means instead of checking infinite point, basically we check only the corner points O, A, B, C. And accordingly, we will decide what should be the value of our function. So why we, uh, we take up the corner points? So for that, uh, we will discuss certain theorems uh, and certain concepts that are important. So the first concept is related to convex set. So a convex set uh, may be defined as a subset of the real space. If and only if any two points, x1 and x2, belonging to the convex belonging to the, this subset, then the line joining these two points also belongs to the, the subset S. Means if X1 and X2 belongs to S, then any line segment, so line segment can be denoted by lambda X1 plus one minus lambda X2. So this will also contain in the, uh, in this subset, it's, it belongs to this S, where lambda can take any value in between zero and one, where both zero and one have been included. So suppose this is a uh, this is a space. Suppose we take any two point. This is x one, and this is x two. So the line joining these two points also belongs to this space. So this will be a this will be a corner point. Uh, uh, this will be a convex set. Suppose we take some other set. Suppose this is our set x. Now we will check whether this will be a convex set or not. So here, if we take these two points, so obviously the line uh, joining uh, these two points belongs to the set. But if we take these two points, then the line joining these two points does not belong to the, this set. So it will not be a convex set. So this is the convex set. So if we check uh, our uh, linear programming solution that uh, was obtained from the graphical method means the feasible region, is a convex set. So in this case, our feasible region is a convex set. Means any two, if we take any two points belong into that region, and when we join these two points, then that line segment also belongs to that set. So this is the convex set. So after convex set, we will discuss the extreme point or the vertex of the convex set. So a point X of the set, so the vertex of the extreme point of the convex set may be defined as, a point X of the set does, that does not lie on any segment joining any other two points of the set. That is, there does not exist any pair of points X1 and X2 belonging to X, S such that lambda X1 plus one minus lambda X2, which is equals to X. I mean, this is not possible. And here you must have noticed that here the condition for lambda is strict inequality means equals to is not being included, right? So uh, in this case, uh, there is no such point, right? That uh, uh, gives us X. So again, I am repeating a point uh, X of the set that does not lie on any segment. On any line segment is denoted by lambda X1 plus uh, one minus lambda X2. So it does not lie on any segment. So, so if this is the condition that those points are known as corner points or the vertex. So as it has been mentioned in the last example, there have been uh, four corner points that was O, A, B, and C. And now we consider a function fx. fx to be a convex function on a convex set, then the local minima on S will also be a global minima, right? This is an important condition, which will give us an insight about the solution. So any, uh, any convex function on a convex set then for that function, local minima will also be a global minima. So this is the case when we consider convex set for LPP, right? So if there is no convex set, then this condition does not uh, get fulfilled. So this is the problem when we consider nonlinear programming. 
So suppose this is a non-linear programming. So in non-linear programming, we have number of minimas, means number of local minimas are there. So it is not necessary uh, in that case when uh, we are not having a convex set, that local minima will uh, finally be a global minima. So this is the case uh, with the convex set that happens in this case also that the local minima will also be a global minima. Right. Now, there are uh, some important concepts that are needed to be discussed. Number one, it is not necessary that we are uh, always ge getting a feasible region. Right. And second, if there is a feasible region, then a uh, feasible region, region may be bounded. It, may, it might not be bounded. Right? Uh, we will discuss this concept again. So the insights from uh, earlier uh, the discussion would be uh, whenever feasible solution existed and feasible solution is convex, bounded by lines or planes. So lines is in the case when we have two variables and in the planes when we have more than two variables. So there are corner point vertices of this convex region. So this is a condition that feasible solution existed, means there, uh, there is not infeasible solution. And this feasible solution is convex. And, it, and this is further bounded by lines or plane. So there will, be, will always be vertices or the convex. And now we move to the optimization part. For each value of z, the objective function, represented by a line or the plane. So here in this case, since we are having two variables, so our objective function would be a line. But when we have more than two variables, there will be a plane, hyperplane. Then the optimum solution occurs at some corner or vertex of the convex region of the solution. So this is a theorem which gives uh, us uh, the importance about the vertex of the uh, feasible region. So that's why we will check uh, only the uh, vertices or the corner points of a feasible region. So again, I am repeating the case for each value of z, the objective function, uh, if it is represented by a line or a hyperplane, then optimum solution occurs at some point on the vertex, right, of the convex region of the feasible solution. So this is an important condition that must be kept in our mind. So now uh, I am going to my earlier PPT. So it might also be possible that in, in some of the cases, feasible solution uh, won't be there. Suppose this is the case. Suppose there is a solution and there is some other thing. So obviously here, in this case, there is no common region uh, which satisfies all the constraints. So this solution is known as infeasible solution. And other, another concept is related to bounded. Suppose in some case, this is our convex region. So this is our convex region. So this, so this is our feasible region. So this region is a convex set. So it is a convex set, but it is not bounded on the upper side. So this is unbounded, since this is not bounded on this side. So this is not bounded. So obviously the solution, if we try this solution, then there are chances that we are getting some unbounded solution. So these two things are to be kept in mind. Means um, uh, we may have infeasible uh, solution, infeasible region, where uh, there is no common region where all the constraints are satisfied. The second point is, even if we have a feasible solution space and that solution space is convex, but it is not necessarily that it will be bounded. So these two conditions are kept in mind. So if we move to our uh, um, this uh, solution here, as we have observed that we have these, uh, this solution is both, uh, it is convex as well as it is bounded also. So obviously it will contain the solution. So if we check the solutions at different points, 
Part four uh, means uh, we will use uh, these corner points to find out the solution for uh, our uh, problem. Right? So if we consider the different cases, so obviously, if we have for A, the value would be zero because both the x1 and x2 are zero. Uh, sorry, for zero, it, this solution would be uh, zero. For A, the next point A, it will, uh, the, the objective function will have a value 120. And for C, it, uh, it would be 144. But if we consider for B and solve it, then we will have a value that is 147.5, right? So obviously this value is being maximized. So this is our optimum corner point. This is our optimum corner point. Means we have optimum solution that will be existed at B, right? So this is our corner point. So uh, here we have checked as uh, we have checked the individual points, the individual corner point for the objective function, and accordingly we have identified that B this solution would be the best. So here the optimum uh, optimum solution would be x1 should take a value 2.5, x2 should take a value 35, and correspondingly the value for the objective function z, which is to be maximized this value comes out to be 147.5. Here, since we are using the divisibility assumption, so it doesn't matter whether the uh, values are uh, integers or non-integers. There is one more concept that is known as isoprofit uh, line, right? So uh, as we have uh, discussed that uh, since we are considering the li linear programming problem, so here are here our objective function is can also be represented by a line. So this is an, uh, this will be an ISO profit line. So if we draw this line and we will move this, so it will ultimately converge to the B. Means ISO profit line will ultimately converge to uh, either the maximum or the minimum, right? So uh, for that purpose, I will use a software. Uh, actually, it is an old software uh, used by Hamdi Taha in his uh, in the in, in the book right and uh, that is the torah uh, not not very much useful but just to show just to give you an idea how this works i am taking help of that software so so this is the software as uh, uh, you are saying here we are having torah software it can be downloaded free. So uh, uh, I am showing you from where we are getting this. I am copying it. And I am pasting it. So uh, as you can check, uh, this is the software. Right? Uh, from uh, here, you can download this software. That is a Tora software. But the problem is since it's being an old software, so it will, uh, when you try to run it, it will require changing of, of, uh, of the resolution. Means it requires the minimum resolution to be checked. So uh, I am taking that just to show you the solution. 